Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is the August 2019 horoscope for the sign Libra. I will go over the transits as I am shuffling the cards. The cards that I will be using are the Barbieri Zodiac Oracle deck, the Rider Tarot deck, the Connolly Tarot deck, and playing cards. So let me just show you. I already have cards pulled and this will be a sneak peek at the month of September. So we will go over these cards at the end. So let's start. So starting off on August 1st, we come into August on a new moon. Mercury is direct. So with Mercury direct and the new moon in Leo, this does give us a portal or access point to true happiness and authenticity. Now we will still be in post shadow as far as Mercury retrograde. So we're out of retrograde, but we are still in post shadow. So there are still things that are up for review. So if there's anything that you did not face during the Mercury retrograde, those things will come up in this post-shadow. Then the moon moves into Virgo. Where we are more inclined to feeling practical, grounded, analytical. This really gives us the desire to want to improve or to work on different areas in our life. Then the moon moves into Libra, where we are more inclined to be peaceful and harmonious, especially in our interactions with others and how we relate to others. Then the moon will move into Scorpio, into its fallen position where you may see some fears or insecurities come to the surface. This will really put us in a position to face these feelings, passions, or desires. that have been hidden or that have not been faced or addressed. And then the moon moves into Sagittarius where we seek out higher consciousness and higher understanding and knowledge. And so this is where we feel more inclined to to find our truth and our philosophy and to make out understanding and meaning and reasoning out of our lives. Now on August 11th, Jupiter comes direct. So for those of you who did not know, Jupiter has been retrograde and its home sign of Sagittarius. And so when, as Jupiter has been in retrograde, this has given us time to really visualize and observe where we want to see our lives go. 
what we really like to manifest and bring into our lives. And so as Jupiter comes direct, this is when all of that starts to come into motion. This is where we see blessings and lessons and challenges come into our lives that help us grow and expand. So this is where we see the growth and abundance come into our lives as Jupiter comes direct. And on the same day, Mercury moves in to Leo. And as of right now, Mercury is retrograde in Cancer. So Mercury does come direct very, very late on July 31st. Now it is still in post shadow. So we are still in review season, this post review season. However, as it moves into Leo, communication becomes more bold, more outspoken. We start to speak straight from the heart. And on the same day, Uranus stations retrograde. And when Uranus goes retrograde, this is when we start to see destruction, chaos, breakdown. And this is because Uranus deals with liberation and breakthroughs. So it wants to free us and to help us reach a higher state of being. And for those of you who don't know, Uranus has been in Taurus. So dealing with our values, our belief systems, the things that make us feel stable and secure. And this is the fallen position for Uranus. As Taurus deals with stability and Uranus deals with freedom and liberation, this becomes the fallen position. This is where it does not work as well. So this is where we have to free ourselves from old belief systems and old foundations in our life that no longer serve us. And when Uranus goes retrograde, anything that you have not released from your life that does not serve you is going to fall apart. Uranus retrograde is the destruction, the chaos, the breakdown in order to liberate you. So keep that in mind as you are going through Uranus direct in Taurus gives you this opportunity to remove these old systems, old belief systems, these old structures, these old forms of comfort and security that no longer serve you. And as you remove those, this makes things easier so that you can live your best life so that you can live in your highest, greatest version. Now, if you don't remove these things, this Uranus in retrograde will remove it by force and it will be in a destructive or chaotic way. Just give me one second.
Okay. Okay. Now, after this Uranus and retrograde, the moon moves into Capricorn. And this is the detrimental position for the moon. This is where we become detached and very serious. And this really gets us into the feeling of being motivated and driven to accomplishing our goals. And then next, on August 15th, we have a full moon in Aquarius. And this is very powerful, especially with this Uranus retrograde. As Uranus retrograde can tend to leave us confused and to not give us the answers that we are looking for. Now, this full moon in Aquarius will give us breakthroughs and will give us the answers and the information that we need that we are in search of so this will be a very powerful time of clarity and unexpected breakthroughs then the moon moves into Pisces and as the moon moves into Pisces there becomes this fog or this confusion when you try to understand things logically or become caught up in the details over analyze and so the best thing to do when this moon moves into Pisces is to get into your feelings to trust your intuition your inner guidance that is the best way to make understanding of the moon in Pisces. Now on August 18th, Mars moves into Virgo and Mars in Virgo is very powerful for getting things done, for meeting deadlines, for following through with routines. This gives you the passion, the energy, the direction to be more responsible, more well-grounded and practical. On August 19th, Jupiter makes aspects with Saturn And we have seen Jupiter make aspects with Saturn several times throughout this year. So this is a reminder. With this Jupiter in Sagittarius and Neptune in Pisces. There are these high hopes. Are these big dreams. And Jupiter making aspects to Saturn gives us the true picture, hits us with the reality, shows us if our dreams, if our hopes, if our visions are really realistic, if they are really something that we can actually achieve. Then the moon moves into Aries where we become more active and lively. A lot of you may be feeling the desire to get out, to do something, to take the initiative to do something new in your life, to step into action. And then the moon moves into Taurus, where the moon is exalted. And so as the moon is in Taurus, this will make us feel very comfortable and safe
And then on August 23rd, we move into Virgo season. So the sun enters Virgo. And this changes the overall way that we see life and the way that we behave. This sort of calms things down overall as the sun in Leo made things more lively, more exciting. This sun in Virgo will make things more practical, more realistic. We will be faced with responsibility with the things that need to be physically done. Then the moon moves into Gemini, where we start to become more social. There tends to be a lot going on in the mind, a lot of mind chatter, and a strong desire to learn and experience something new. So that increases our feeling of curiosity. Then the moon moves at home in Cancer, where we start to become more emotional, more empathetic, more compassionate. Then the moon moves into Leo, giving us the confidence and the authenticity to express our feelings. This really starts to make things more light, more fun, more exciting. And we aren't afraid to show our feelings. This puts our emotions on stage. And then we end the month of August with a new moon in Virgo on August 30th. And this new, this new moon is a gateway or a portal to ways to improve your life. and to work on yourself. And I'm going to backtrack a little bit because we did skip Venus in Virgo, which happens on August 21st. Venus in Virgo is a challenging position. Venus is at its fall position in Virgo. This is where the love, the comfort, the beauty, the creativity becomes more realistic, more practical, more grounded, more serious. And so it's important to be cautious of being overly critical or overanalyzing situations, especially dealing with relationships. Now, on the positive note, this gives you the ability to improve and work on the challenging areas in your relationships. And that is the month of August. So the month of August is very light compared to July. July was very intense dealing with the eclipses and Mercury in retrograde on top of that. And so this energy is very, very light. Much more easygoing. 
which should give you the ability to work on yourself. The month of July with the eclipse seasons and Mercury in retrograde on top of it really put us in a place of self-reflection. And so now in the month of August, it is time to do the work you did the self-reflection, you saw the areas that needed improvement and growth and work. So now it is time to put that into motion in the month of August. And we start off with the Six of Swords. So already Libra, you are feeling this peace of mind. You are bridging the gaps, putting together the pieces to the puzzle and making sense out of what it is that you need to work on. So already Libra, you are starting from a very positive place. And you're ready to move forward with the Knight of Swords. You're ready to move forward with positive thinking. You're ready to put your thoughts and your intentions into forward motion. I also see you as being very balanced, very well grounded. Now the issue here is you are stuck in the thought, in the, in the intention of moving forward, but you're not acting on it. There is showing me that you are in this place of waiting or procrastination. A lot of you are procrastinating. It's like you have the intention you want to move forward, but a lot of you are waiting. And the question that you have to ask yourself is what are you waiting for? I can tell you that the time is now for you to take action. For those of you who are procrastinating, for those of you who are waiting for the perfect moment, the time is now for you to act. Because whether you choose to take action or not, you are going to go through this tower moment there is going to be a period where you will go through challenges, where you will go through lessons, where things will be out of balance. You will go through this tower moment. And so the question then becomes, are you going to do what you need to do and accept this tower moment? Or is your procrastination going to lead to this tower moment? And this feels very much like this 
Uranus in retrograde. That will happen on August 11th. Where again, it's this idea that you must go through this change, through this freedom, this breakthrough of releasing yourself from the old. But you can choose to do it or the foundation can fall from underneath you. And the end result of going through this tower moment is the temperance, is coming into this place of balance, of peace and harmony. That is the end result of this tower moment. So keep that in mind as some of you are waiting because you're trying to avoid this tower moment. You're waiting for the perfect moment. There is no perfect moment. You will go through this tower moment. And at the end of this tower moment, you will find peace and harmony. And it feels as though there is a lack of expression of how you feel. There's a lack in expressing how you feel. And a lot of this feeling has to do with this tower moment that you will go through. So don't be afraid to express your feelings and don't be afraid to be tied down. A lot of you, this has to do with being tied down to this tower moment. Again, this is showing a lot of you not wanting to commit. And it's because of it's this tower moment that you must commit to. So again, a lot of you have this positive intention. You have this positive thought of what you want to do, but you're holding yourself back from doing it. You don't want to commit to it, to all of it. Because the tower moment's a part of it. Now the solution is being more grounded. Being more serious and grounded and committed to taking action. And here it is. Page of Wands, taking action. Committed to taking action. That is what a lot of you need to do is commit to the action. You're committed to the thought. You have the intention. It's set. You're coming from a positive place, but you're not acting for a lot of you. A lot of you don't want to commit. You don't want to take the action. Again, very, very positive energy. I feel a lot of you coming from a very, very positive place. 
a very, very positive space and mindset. Very positive. But it's all thought. It's intention. So let's put that intention to action. And it's even right here with fire in reverse. No action. Let's put this into action, into motion. And again, for those of you who aren't expressing how you feel, here it is, the moon in reverse. A lot of you need to express how you feel. A lot of you need to take action. Commit yourself to taking this action. Because this leads you to wisdom, to understanding, to abundance. It leads you to this Jupiterian energy. So it leads you somewhere good. And we saw that with the temperance card. So therefore, there should be no hesitation with this. A lot of you need to commit to acting on your intent. And again, we saw this before with the Two of Pentacles, this balance. A lot of you need to be more grounded, more balanced. You need to commit, physically commit yourself to acting on your intent. And here it is, the groundedness. The balance, the harmony that's in this ability to be grounded, but it's the commitment, again, six of diamonds, the commitment to the two, the two of clubs, the action part of it. Commit yourself to taking action. And it does end in positivity. The nine, the ending, the growth, the transformation, nine. Ending with this forward movement. Ending with this infinite peace and harmony, this love at the end of this. Now this is for the month of September. And Mercury is here, so this is an indication that a lot of you will be 
expressing your feelings more. This does bring communication into the picture. This also talks about your movement also. This does bring in forward movement as well. Now the challenge areas that we see Again, we saw this before with the relationship between earth and fire that we need to bring in this commitment to taking action. And so some of you still aren't really committing to taking action. Some of you are still sort of closing yourself off from this. Now it does look like a positive ending for a lot of you. This does look like a lot of you do, in the end, act on your intent. A lot of you do, in the end, have this willpower, this strong sense of self with Aries at the end of this. So a lot of you do start fresh. A lot of you do create this intent that you have through actually taking action in the end. So a lot of you will be successful in the month of September. A lot of you, this tower moment that you're going through in the month of August, and you will be successful in the month of August as well. It shows that. But a lot of you don't actually take the action until September. So keep that in mind. Some of you will see the, the end result in August. Some of you will see it in September. Some of you won't see it either way because you're not taking the action. So things are looking very, very positive for you, Libra, for the month of, of August, and even with the sneak peek at the month of September. So that was your horoscope for August 2019. And taking a quick look at September of 2019. If this resonated with you or helped you in any way, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like if you are new to this channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. Thank you all so much for joining and I hope you have a great day.